I'm Josh Brunson from ITS Partners. And I'm Elena Ardito, an IT Asset Management Consultant with ITS. So Elena, in the video, what are we going to cover? We're going to be going through the Software Asset Management module within ServiceNow. And uh, what are some of the features we'll be looking at in that module? We're going to start off with doing the basic installation of the plugin for Software Asset mm -hmm. Management, and then we're going to jump into the actual basic components included in that module. Okay, any particular ones that uh, we'll be focusing on in this particular video? Um, the, the main goal, of course, is software compliance, mm -hmm. but we're going to be looking at software entitlements as well as the software license types. Okay, thank you. Uh, one quick note, everything we're doing in this video is done on a baseline Calgary instance, so you're welcome to follow along. Welcome to the Lab 1, Section 1 of 2 that we're going to be going through for software asset management. We are in the ITS ServiceNow instance. We need to be logged in initially as an admin, which is going to allow us to install the plugin for software asset management initially. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. For anyone that's not familiar, this is the kind of standard welcome page of ServiceNow. Uh, these are the modules in the application navigator on the left hand side. We're going to be going through, as I had mentioned, installing the software asset management plugin to start with. From there, I'm going to go through some basic understanding of the software discovery models, software models, software counters, and what those are within the ServiceNow asset, uh, software asset management module, and how those allow us to obtain the software asset management compliance. So I'm going to start with searching for the plugin, which will allow us to check to see if the plugin is installed or not. This is a list of the available plugins that ServiceNow provides. We're going to search for uh, asterisks and then software. This allows us to get any applications that include um, the term software, so we can search for those. So software asset management, as you can see, is currently inactive. This is the available plugin. So as you see, again, status inactive. And then at the very bottom, we have the activate or upgrade. This allows us to install that plugin. And it does give you a prompt that allows you to load the demonstration data. We are going to be doing this for this lab purpose. I would not recommend doing it in any production instance. Um, it will clutter up your environment with a bunch of demo data, which you just have to remove at a later point. So but like I said, we are going to activate and install for demonstration. It'll take a few minutes, but once the plugin is finished installing, you can go ahead and then search in your application navigator again for that software asset management plugin. Okay, so these are all the different components that make up of that, that individual plugin. At the top, we have an overview, which gives you a high level of the data that's available within this. As you can see, there's not a whole lot yet because we haven't run the specific license compliance calculation, which will then start populating these graphs or these reports. So let's run through really quickly what the um, different components are that make up compliance and give us this data. So starting with software models, this is a list of all the available software models. Now software models can include um, what data or software that's come in from your inventory or software that has maybe not found through any discovery tool, but it will give you um, a basic idea for display name, manufacturer, version information on a specific software model. So you will need a software model defined for each piece of software you want to include in your environment. So now we're going to jump over to the discovery models. Software discovery models are basically all of the information that's coming in from an inventory source. Inventory that's being collected with that throughout your environment, coming in from some maybe system center or ulterior client management solution. This data is being pulled in at, that's live in the inventory that's actually installed on the clients. So basic data that's coming in and is, is populated into a software discovery model is display name, publisher, and version. Um, that information will allow it to make automatic matches back to a software model, which again is what's going to come together to give you that compliance information. So that software model really is key in tying in um, back to the software license. 
So a software license is what your rights are, what you have available and what's been purchased for a distribution within your environment. So it literally is that contract that, that shows you how many total um, available software licenses that you can distribute and stay in compliance. So this, this license, again, is linked back to the software model, just like the discovery model is, and will in, can include financial information, contract data, leases, warranties, um, as well as the entitlement data it can be associated to this software license. So it really gives you a complete idea of the rights. Now getting the software license compliance numbers out of ServiceNow requires a task to be run. And you can do this check license compliance task and run it manually. And it's also something that runs nightly on within the environment. But it basically runs and checks the rights versus your installs on all the software models you have. As this goes, you can do the refresh on this page. But it's basically going to run the calculations and you'll see these numbers start to change. As you can see, the different uh, colors indicate different levels of your compliancy. I'm going to click on the MSDN for an example here, just to give um, a better idea of what the actual counter is doing. Um, as you can see, the name of, of the software counter and then you can and the software model that's directly associated to the software counter. Something I want to point out is the license type. This is defined on, on the software model itself, but I wanted to just bring it up here on basically the different types that are available within ServiceNow, which provides different calculations, which is what that, um, that task, that license compliance task is relying on. And those can be customized as well. So this is a list of what the entitlements are that are broken out between the rights that you have uh, with uh, this software license. So entitled in use, just as it sounds, who's in, uh, entitled to be using the software and who it does actually have it installed. Not entitled, users that have it installed on their, on their computer but shouldn't have it or are not authorized to use it. Entitled and not in use, so they, they are entitled to use it but it's not installed. And not allocated simply is how many you have still rights to use but haven't been distributed or um, um, entitled for use at this point. So now that we understand the breakout of the entitlements within the software specific software model, let's go ahead and dive a little bit deeper and try to get some more information, for example, about the not entitled users. By coming to the right and clicking this icon over here, we can get the um, columns for each of the, this, uh, this um, report view and sort by type. Let's grab not entitled. So go ahead and click that. We have nine as evaluation. As you can see, we see that the type is not entitled. The software install is, of course, a Microsoft MSDN. And then we're not really given any further information. For example, if we were to mitigate this issue as far as these users or this, these computers that are not entitled to have this software, how would we go ahead and move forward and, and try to remove it to make sure we're in compliance again? Um, a, a quick and easy way to update these forms is right-clicking on the title or the, um, the column headers to personalize this layout. And this basically, everything on this uh, selected items is what you're seeing as a column header. So we can grab data that's related to that specific um, software counter and pull it over and just add a column to it very easily. So let's go ahead and get um, drilled into software install. By hitting this little plus sign, it basically drills down into the, the columns within those tables and the associated tables to that, that um, table as well. You have over, it gives you a little bit more information, hardware on, the, on which the software is installed. So let's go ahead and add that. Click the right arrow. Let's drill down a little bit further. Maybe we can get some assigned to, so we can grab, collect who the user is that's, a, that's associated to this piece of hardware, so we can contact them directly. You can also double click, which will add it over. So this is also the order of which you're going to see the columns. So we can um, adjust the order that we want to view them in. So let's move valuation to the end by just moving it to the bottom. That looks pretty good. So let's just go ahead and hit save from now. All right. So now you can see you get a little bit further data on this installed on this is the name of the computer assets that are um, not entitled to be using this software and the assigned to users. Not completely populated, but it does give you a little bit more information. And from here, you can also drill down 
can go directly to this asset. You can get all the information, you have location information on it, anything like that, you'd be able to collect it here. So that uh, wraps up the end of the Software Asset Management Lab Section 1. Uh, thank you for watching and check back at itsdelivers.com for further videos relating to ServiceNow and the, the, um, the next video that follows up the Software Asset Management series.